The night you really jacked my chain, but still discovered how much I love you through all the anger and frustration when I was little, my dad would work late hours and I always anticipated when he would come home because he always gave us a kiss goodnight. I would even stay awake because I loved those moments with my dad, even though sometimes it would be 2 a.m. Never in a million years did I think that God would provide me with a man that could make me feel loved the way my dad, my dad did when he would get home. I feel truly honored and blessed to not only become your wife, but to literally have found my best friend in you. My ground rodent, pocket gopher, trapping, cow loving, and God fearing man. I'm excited to watch our relationship grow before God and look forward to the years I get to annoy you ahead. I know without a doubt that God created you just for me and that he always has big plans for us. I find strength and reassurance in knowing that no matter what, what life throws at us, together as a team, we can conquer anything. I can't wait to see you. I know you're looking real fine, just like you always do. See you soon, Sarah. There you go. I have my lipstick on for the day. The day of preparation, planning, or possibly lack thereof on my part for a few things, in anticipation has arrived. There is so much to say when I deeply ponder the expectations and goals that I have for our marriage. I believe the important part of that sentence is an emphasis on our marriage. This also comes to the gravity of that commitment that I promise to uphold every day, continually choosing you as my promise. That means I will be your protector, rock, house of security, I want you to run to me when you need comforting, feel afraid, scared, unsure of yourself, or questioning. You are the reason for the twinkle in my eye, the happy moment of, moment of every day, and the wife I will provide for. You are my love, and I am yours. And we forever find comfort, encouragement, compassion, and patience from each other. I choose you as God made you, just as you are, with all the parts of you that you may think of as God's. Sir, I hope I have shown you that I have chosen you just as you are, imperfect and perfect, blemished and spotless, fragile and strong and scared, but courageous. I have seen you at all these points, and I know that you are exactly as God made you, which, exactly, which is exactly the woman and partner for the rest of my life. Michael. Sarah, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Michael, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With great joy, I present to you now Mr. and Mrs. Michael and Sarah Schmidt.
When Michael was growing up, we lived in an old country farmhouse. It had a big picture window in the living room. And uh, it had a bird feeder right in the middle of the picture window. One day, a squirrel came and climbed up the pole and it was eating bird seed on that bird feeder. And Michael thought that was rather unique, that this uh, squirrel was smart enough to climb the steel post and eat bird seed. And well, time went on, that squirrel kept coming back to that bird feeder. And uh, Michael says, you know, I think I could catch that squirrel. <laughs> well, squirrels are kind of quick. <laughs> but Michael says, you know, I think if I go around the corner of the house, right when it's on there, and it's big, long, fluffy tail, if I run fast enough and it's looking the other way, maybe I could grab that squirrel and catch that squirrel. I said, well, good luck. <laughs> he had a, 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 quite a distance to go from the corner of the house to that feeder, but he was game to try it. One day come along, you know, and there comes squirrel up the pole again, sitting on the bird feeder and heading in the right direction. So Michael scooted out of the house. This was maybe a, like a 10 year old boy. He sat there in the corner of the house and we were all watching him on the corner and all of a sudden he darted across in front of that picture window and he caught that squirrel's tail. But the, the squirrel jumped and he came running in the house and he had the squirrel's tail. So I guess once, once Michael found the woman that he loved and that he wanted to be with, <laughs> I, I knew, I just knew Sarah was not going to get away. <laughs> One day he flew in, just for a day. Come in on Friday and you were going to fly back out on Sunday, I believe. At night I sleep on the chair on my couch. And Michael's around the house, he's nervous, like really, really nervous. He's pacing back and forth throughout the house. So about 11.30, Michael wakes me up on my chair. And he says, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm half asleep, so you don't know what's really going on. Michael says, we need to talk. I said, okay, is everything okay? So he says, I'd like to marry your daughter. And I says, is everything okay? <laughs> he said, yeah. Kind of quietly, kind of, yeah. And he says, I'd really like to marry your daughter. I'm in love with her. I says, do you really know what you're getting into? <laughs> and he says, yeah. So I respect the kid for this. And, he sa and I said yes to him. But I went to bed that night. I told my wife, I said, God, I, said, I don't know if I dreamt this. <laughs> or he really asked. <laughs> but... We are proud to have him part of the family. And for you guys, the little things. Man, treasure it. Um, take advantage of it. Every little fight you have, you'll always make up. And Michael, we know what's gonna happen. It's just the way it is with you two. We, you guys are a pair, so. God bless you and follow your faith and enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs>